What is going on guys? It is me, Austin, you know me. And I was working on the bus, and it's starting to look a lot better, as you've seen. But the roof rack is letting it down at this point. And I was thinking, oh, I'll just clean it up, put it back on, but that would, it just wouldn't look so good on the bus. So I'm actually gonna pull this thing apart. There's, there's some mushrooms on it. Here's a mushroom. And pull it apart. And I guess restore the roof rack. So I'm gonna tear it all apart. Possibly new wood. Uh, repaint these. Clean it all up. Make it look great, just like the bus looks. So first step is going to be taking pictures of it, so I know where everything connects, all the screws go, and then start tearing it apart. Let's get to it. Once you get that outer rim uh, of the rack off, it becomes a little flimsy, so you just gotta be careful with that. And then you gotta get the screws out, so I'm gonna start attacking those because there's quite a lot of them. Let's do it. Time for a lemonade break or something. Now that the rack is apart, we're going to have to clean it. Luckily, we already have the power washer out because we're cleaning the driveway. It's going to clean these and then think about maybe cleaning the boards. Those boards seem like they're starting to just fall apart. So I might be getting new ones. It depends. That's just something to think about if you're doing this yourself. So we're going to clean these and then while these are drying out there after cleaning them, can start working on the surrounding bar on top of it, cleaning that up and making that look good. So let's clean these now. Oh, that felt great, that felt great. Now while we let those dry, let's work on the rest of the rack. Okay, so with this, it's actually in pretty good condition. I mean, it's not like rusted apart. There's a little surface rust on the screws and whatnot. But what I think I'm gonna do is just clean it up like I did out there and then sand it to give it a little bit of a stainless steel, you know, that brushed look. And I think that look really good on top of the bus, not too chromey shiny. So the first thing I guess I gotta do is bring this out there and clean it too. So what I'm gonna start out with is a heavier grit sandpaper. I'm not exactly sure. I think it might be a hundred. <laughs> but uh, just a heavier grit sandpaper. I probably should cut this down and I probably will. But I can actually move these out a little bit. And that helps get all this, all these marks, it helps take some of those off so it'll look a little better. So I'm just gonna go over it with a tough grit sandpaper first.
I'm just gonna wipe it down with the paper towel. And you can see it's obviously getting stuff off. And actually what I was gonna do is take a higher grit sandpaper, a smoother sandpaper, and go over it and it'll slowly get to like more of a, sh it'll get more shiny and less um, brushed look. However, I think I like this look. I think I like how it looks right now. So I'm gonna keep doing that around the rest. If you do want it to be shinier, you can go with a higher grit, um, a smoother, a finer sandpaper. However, I like this. It seems to be pretty cool. So I'm gonna keep doing that. My card ran out of memory on the camera, but as I was saying, I'm just gonna keep doing that and go all the way around and sand all of the metal so that it all looks the same and looks really good. Okay, new, is my camera dead? Okay, new plan. I'm going to sand all this after I install it because I've noticed that once I move these around, it scuffs it all up and looks bad again. So once it's all bolted and set in place, then I can sand and then clean these up as well. So this is being put on hold. So now I think I'm gonna paint, or clean up and paint the actual support beams. Now these rails, as you can tell, have seen better days, so they're going to get sanded down, primered, and then painted. I think at this point I should say if you have a sandblaster, obviously you should use that. It makes it a lot easier. You get Super smooth finish because with this, the way I'm doing it, um, it's really only knocking some of the paint flakes off and I can smooth down as best as I can the rest of it, but um, there's just, you're going to see some dimples in it. So if you have a sand blaster, use that. I wish I did. Maybe someday when I have a shop of my own, I can. But for right now, I'm just going to sand it with the orbital sander that I have. So after a little messing around and thinking, I've decided that I, instead of going out and buying new wood and having to drill all the holes and cut them and yada yada yada, that I'm just gonna save these ones. They're a little beat, um, more cracked. However, I did a little test on this one, and it, or excuse the strip, um, but it sands down to be pretty good finish, and then I will stain and varnish them. So, just save a few bucks and reuse these ones. Safety first, so I don't get splinters in my eyeballs. And sand. How I'm doing the sides of these is I'm putting a clamp in the middle so it holds it all together and I can just sand all along the side, do them all at once. I've already done the tops and then I'll flip it to the other side, do the same thing, and then lay them all on their tops and sand the bottoms of them all. Now that I have sanded all the wood down, I'll be applying this polyurethane stain. Um, so opposed to having to do a stain then the lacquer over it or whatever. This is just one coat you gotta do, well you gotta do more than one coat, but one step you don't have to do another layer over it. So I'm gonna start doing that, brushing it on with a cheap brush. I gotta do one coat and then it has to sit for six hours and then I can do more. So you're gonna get to watch that. You have to shake it. Oh yeah. 
On some of these pieces, I actually went back and sanded. Let's find an example on something like here, where there's um, it like dripped along the side. I'll go back and sand that again and reapply some more. Obviously, that's the good looking side. Um, except still just sand that down and then reapply some more of the stain and then it ends up looking like this. The really pretty side. That's going to be the bottom side of the roof rack. That's just the way that... Drop my phone. That's just the way that like there's already countersunk holes. However, normal height people, um, people of the average height, uh, when you just stand and look up at the rack, you see the bottom anyway, so that works out pretty good. So I just got to finish doing that to the rest of these, and then I've got the bars painted. This one could use a little touch-up. My life is in shambles. <laughs> but overall, I'm pretty happy with it. It's better than it looked before by far. So I'm just gonna, uh, I'm tripping over everything, dropping everything, breaking everything. I just gotta lay that out and start bolting stuff up while I finish that. So three, two, one, go. I was just attacked by those bugs. I need to pause music for copyright. I just killed two of these creepy bugs. I hate bugs, in case you didn't know. I just killed two of these creepy bugs in my garage. They're like these, they look like wasps. But they're all black and for the past like two weeks, there's been a ton in the garage and I was out there filming uh, the roof rack video and I killed two of them. Like normally I don't like killing things like spiders and stuff. I try to get them out of the garage and stuff. But these things, no mercy. I hate these things. They're disgusting looking. And so I killed two of them and I'm just standing there looking at the footage I just got. One just flies and lands on my neck. These... <laughs> Now I'm inside. Whoa, oh, falling. Pro tip, if you're gonna do this, Think about what you're going to be screwing into, because wood screws will not screw into the metal bars. It literally just strips a screw out. So I'm going to have to go get some new screws. The box opened and I almost dropped them all. Okay, back in the garage. As you can see, I've made some progress on the rack. By progress, I mean finished sanding down and restaining the spots that needed restaining, and have screwed them on to the rack. I did get new hardware. So you can see here, lots of little bags of hardware that I got from Home Depot. And I screwed them all on. Um, I am missing four, which are right there, which still need sanding and um, staining. So one thing I came into when doing this First of all, make sure that they are sheet metal screws because I had a box of screws that were exact size, they, they looked exactly the same, however they were meant for wood. And when I went to screw them into the metal, um, the threads on the screw just flattened out. So sheet metal screws and on some of these, the weaker ones, I tried to put the weaker ones on the far side because I have it planned out, that's going to be the front, the ladder goes over here. And so if I ever crawl on top, because I do sometimes at Cars and Coffee to take pictures, um, I'll have the weakest ones on this side because I'm not going to step over here. However, there is a weak one over here. It's just the way it turned out that there's a weak one ended up over here. Because I also wanted the, on the underside the pretty ones to be near the outside because then you'll see them more. This one ended up here. This one, when I screwed it in, actually split the wood. So I had to back it out, made sure it's snug into this into the bar so it wasn't going anywhere and then actually got some clear wood glue there was a huge crack down the center and I put some wood glue in there clamped it together now it's good so now we're doing it there and here as well so now I just have to 
sand and stain those. And we'll be ready to go back on. And then we can do that metal thing. All right, as you can see, I have used the proper screws and screwed all of the wooden planks in, as well as putting in the carriage bolts here um, and in different places around there. So all I've got to do now is put that on, bolt it all in, um, get the clamps that go on the outside of the rain gutter, paint those, and then slap it on the bus. All right, now that I have these four bars, which go on the bottom side here and there, now that I have those all painted and looking pretty, I can bolt those on up and then that'll tie everything together and then it'll be ready to go on top of the bus. Hey guys, it's a few days later and uh, I got something to show you. Disregard all the other stuff going on because I was actually filming a bus update video for you guys, but. There it is. Obviously I don't have the clamps on it right now. But it looks good. I also need to put the ladder back on, which will tie into the black bars. That's partially why I did the black bars and it'll all tie in. But look how much better the bus looks. And once I finish the back bumper, uh, wrap up all the interior stuff. It'll be awesome. All right, inside for the outro. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Say hi to Chanel. Oh, she didn't like it. You're okay. All right. So, just want to say thank you for watching this video. I do apologize, there's been a lack of updates and bus videos. Because I've just been really busy, I'm really trying to grow the channel, so I've been working on a lot of stuff behind the scenes, but I really need to be uploading some more videos, so I have like five videos to edit right now, so I gotta get going on that, as well as working on the bus. So thank you so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. Make sure, if this is your first time watching videos, or you just watched all the bus videos, subscribe. I do other stuff than just buses as well, especially more stuff coming in the future. <laughs> Hit that like button, subscribe. Stay tuned for more updates and more stuff coming in the future. Big things in the works. Alright guys, take it easy.